Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the blockbuster Rocking the Nation. The lady herself, Miss Madam Web. Sources have confirmed that I have watched the movie, so unfortunately you do have to hear about it. Sorry, I don't make the rules, I just work here. So I think let's, let's just let's just jump into it. Okay, so we're in the movie. First thing we see is like the Marvel intro studio, you know, like the thing where normally there's like Captain America, like chucking his shield and you see Iron Man, you see everybody. We do get that at the beginning of Madam Web, but it is like a shorter version than like if you're watching Endgame. Now, I know we just got started, but there is already a lot to unpack here. Who here has heard the discourse around the Marvel and Sony universe, which is just another, like it's just a fancy way of saying studio beef. Okay, who here has heard this? Anyone? Anyone? This is a Socratic lecture. I will cold call. Basically, there's been some speculation that Marvel is only letting Sony say like they're part of the Marvel universe so that they can keep using Spider-Man because Spider-Man, like the entity or like the idea of Spider-Man is owned by Sony. So in order for Marvel to keep using it, they have to be like in the good graces with Sony. So people are saying like Marvel is kind of like, yeah, sure. That was supposed to be a wink. Yeah, sure, you guys are in the Marvel Universe, totally, totally. Kind of like big brothering them in order to keep using Spider-Man. There has been some discussion. I just keep using different words for discussion. There's been some discussion, some speculation, some discourse around whether Sony is like duping actors into thinking they're joining the Marvel Universe. Universe? The Marvel Universe. Hey, the witty. There's been some discourse on whether Sony is duping actors into thinking they're joining the Marvel Universe when really it's like, you know, kind of like its own entity that like name drops it a few times. It's kind of like Andy in the office where he keeps name dropping Cornell. It's like they're like kind of related, but not really. That reference didn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> but yeah, so there has been some discussion on the internet on whether Sony is duping actors into thinking they're joining the Marvel Universe, which is something that my chemistry partner knew very deeply and loved very deeply. Yeah, my Chem 103 partner could not titrate, but he could tell me every single fact about Iron Man. So... I don't know, titration, Marvel Universe, you tell me what's worth more. It's the Marvel Universe. <laughs> so that's kind of the case with Madam Web, all right? It's a Sony movie, but it's in the Marvel Universe, but not really. There's like nary a Marvel character cameo, which is like very common in any Marvel movie. But there is some information that is dumped that relates the universes, but we are getting ahead of ourselves. So we'll, we'll talk about that later. Let's get back to the movie. So we open on a woman in the Amazon. And I don't mean like Jeff Bezos' Amazon, I mean the Amazon in South America. And the woman is looking at like a spider web really closely. I gotta say this version of the Amazon looks less like a jungle and more like my backyard in rural Wisconsin. It looks like Amazon, Jeff Bezos' Amazon could deliver to this Amazon. So I don't know, I, but, I, but I digress, let's get back. Stay focused. So we find out that this woman is looking for a spider that's been really difficult to find and she's been looking for a really long time. We see that she's with a man and she's kind of explaining her research to him, but she's like talking about peptides and she quickly realizes this man is like an idiot. Like she decides he's stupid and he doesn't know anything about biochemistry. So she's just like, ah, you know, whatever, it's fine. You don't know what a peptide is. Amino acids, never heard of her. So she just like rolls her eyes at him and says, basically they supercharge the cellular structure. So basically she's mansplaining like the same type of thing of the mitochondria as the powerhouse of the cell. While she is demolishing this man's masculinity, she is also taking notes in a notebook on the spider web. While I was watching the movie, I just started like dying laughing because in my head, in her journal, she was just like doodling a spider web because like that was like all that was in front of her. So all I could imagine was her just like, making a spider web design instead of like discussing anything about habitat. Suddenly she bends over in pain and there is a plot reveal that she is majorly pregnant. And then it cuts to the man, the like I don't know what his job is and my head is like a security man but I really don't know what he's doing there. But it cuts to him kind of back at like their, their home base, like their camp. And he has like this little baby camera and he's like taking pictures of everything, like definitely doing some snooping, like we definitely should not trust him. And while he's going through like all her notes and taking pictures, there literally is a drawing of a spider. And that just killed me. It was so funny. I'm like, okay, so she was just doodling actually. She was just having, you know, art hour in her notebook. Okay, suddenly the scientist comes back and she's holding a spider in a jar. And she's like, look, I actually, I found the spider that we've been hunting for forever. I actually found it. The security man is like, no way, that's so sick hand over the spider. He just whips out a Glock. He starts shooting everyone in the camp. He has what I think is a Spanish accent, but I looked it up and the actor is French. So maybe I'm just accent illiterate. I'm really not sure what's going on here, but to me, it came off as like Spanish. He asks the scientist to hand the spider over. She says, no, 
He says, okay, he shoots her, literally shoots a pregnant woman, okay? So I don't want to see any velocity edits of this man on TikTok, okay? Cap cut edits only. Evil security man takes a spider, takes off. Weird noises descend. You hear these like weird ominous noises in the trees. And then this like tribe of evil spider people come down the trees kind of in like a spiderly fashion, okay? And they take the scientist woman who is like bleeding out. One of them takes her in his arms and he starts like running through the trees like Edward Cullen style, okay? And I have to think that this scene was inspired by Twilight specifically because as we all know, what does Edward Cullen call Bella? His spider monkey. These are spider people, okay? It's connected, okay? Not everyone's putting in this research like me, okay? You can only find that here. They bring the scientist to an Icelandic spa. Okay, she's in that milky water and they have a spider like bite her in the chest. The spider not only induces labor, but it also eliminates it because a baby pops out with like nary a push. They gotta market this shit for women, okay? I think people would pay good money to avoid the labor part of birth, okay? So we gotta get on that peptide research. Um, okay, anyways. <laughs> So sadly, the mom, the scientist, she, she conks before she's able to touch her baby, okay? Very sad moment, moment of silence. And then immediately a Casey Neistat cut, okay? We're in New York. Anastasia is an EMT, so she's driving an ambulance through, you know, the hustle and bustle of New York City. So we're going to talk a little bit about when this movie is like set, because I think it is a little confusing. But I'm just gonna tell you like what time period I thought it was based on like where I was watching this movie. So like at this point when I was watching the movie, I was like, oh, this is this is the 90s. And you can tell this clearly because she drives by a blockbuster, which to me a blockbuster is like iconic like 90s. It's clearly supposed to t show you that this is set in not current times. Rip blockbuster. We find out that her ambulance partner is Adam Scott, like the actor Adam Scott, which to me was like a little bit of whiplash because the only thing I've seen him in is Parks and Rec. So to me, he's like a comedic actor. It's like kind of like Adam Sandler in Uncut Gems. It's like you need to give me a second to adjust before like he starts talking to a safety brother. Anyways, they're driving down the street to New York City and like everyone is like honking at them, which to me is like insane behavior for an emergency vehicle. Like normally, like, I work by hospitals. Like, normally people just get out of the way. If I'm being honest, the acting is, like, a little rough here. It's very, like, monotone vibes going on here. So it does kind of, like, take a minute, I think, to, like, get into the movie because it's, like, a little student film-esque within the acting department. But, you know, it, it, we're warming up. It's okay. It can be overlooked because the funniest part of this section of the movie is the editing. And I genuinely think they were trying to evoke a Casey Neistat video because this is set in New York. The editing is cut based on like noises and like, like I guess visuals too. It's just cut exactly how Casey would make a video, I think. So anyways, they get the person to the hospital. Dakota Johnson and Adam Scott are like walking through the hospital and one of the doctors or nurses walks up to them and like, oh, hey, by the way, your patient's gonna be okay. And Dakota Johnson is like, like okay. Like, who asked? And then in walks Sydney Sweeney, and it is laughable, like, how they try to tone down her hotness. It's like the antithesis to Euphoria's high schoolers. They said, bibs, wham, collared shirt, wham, glasses, wham, burnt ass red hair, wham. Sydney's character is at the hospital because she is step related to the patient they brought into the hospital. But that's like really all you gotta know for now, like why she's there. And then it cuts to a scene of Dakota Johnson's character and Adam Scott's character, who we find out his name is Ben, and they're just like eating at the hospital. The scene is like kind of boring. All you really need to know is Ben is drinking a Mountain Dew. Dakota Johnson's character's name is Cassie, which is in fact my name, okay? Stay in your lane, find your own name. Uh, Cassie's kind of an asshole and she pops a fortune cookie where the fortune is smeared out, okay? Okay. Very quickly, back to her name being Cassie, I feel like I am being punked right now. Every piece of media I've consumed lately has had a Cassie in it. I read two books in a row where the main character's name was Cassie, which is like very narcissistic of me when I'm like just reading only books with my name in it. And the second book, the main character's name was actually Cassidy, which is my like legal birth certificate name. I'm not even kidding. 
the book I started after I watched the movie, the main character's name is like Cassia or Cassia or something, but it's like, you know, one letter off from being Cassie. I just like feel like I'm going a little bit crazy. It's like also ironically Sydney Sweeney's character's name in Euphoria and Euphoria Sydney Sweeney is Cassie. Someone I work with at my like real job, her name, we have almost the exact same first name and we have the same last name. So we're like constantly getting each other's emails. It's one thing to have the same first name, but having like almost the exact same first name and last name feels insane. I guess like white names, <laughs> white names are pretty basic. I went like my whole life, maybe knowing like two Cassies, to now I'm like super smash broing with every Cassie in a two mile radius. Cassie walks into our apartment building at the end of her shift. Cassie's apartment itself is huge for New York. Like I'm very jealous of her apartment. She starts feeding a stray cat milk and it's very like, like her dialogue is a stray cats need to stick together. And it's very like, like pretty cringe dialogue. Cassie pulls a trunk from under her bed and in it is a notebook and it is her mom's notebook with the spider web drawing in it. Okay, I remember. There's a picture of her mom in the notebook, just in case anyone in the back like didn't catch on that this was, you know, Cassie was her daughter. The mom is wearing debatably the same outfit we saw her wearing in the beginning clip. So, you know, sustainable queen. My last comment I have on the journal, I know I'm ragging on it pretty hard, is that the journal is giving more like bullet journal than like scientific, like record keeping. For all my non-nerds, when you work in a like wet lab environment, you have to keep track of all the experiments you're running. So like, you know, depending on what your thing is, but like what reagents you're using or, you know, just like stuff like that you have to write down. Not a lot of scientists, you might imagine, have like the cleanest handwriting. I personally have the handwriting of a kindergartner. I think part of it stems from your undergrad class load if you're in like a STEM major. Like you don't have time for like clean girl aesthetic notes when your like orgo professor is like shoving five experiments down your throat or five reactions down your throat per lecture like you just get used to it at some point and you're just like going as fast as you can versus like english one i'm an english major I can, i'm allowed to make fun of english majors i was also an english major bang another casey neistat cut to cassie and ben cutting a man out of a car his car is hanging off a bridge it is like flipped over. So they cut the man out of the car with Cassie in it. When Ben pulls the man out of the car, the weight distribution shifts and the door closes and Cassie is trapped in the car as the car falls off the bridge. Now my first like hypothesis about what was going on here was that this was a dream, but no, no, this is Cassie like realizing her powers. A lot of like really random like things happen. It's like kind of hard to explain. Like a lot of things are happening. It's really like quite like mid CGI, sorry. It's like not very good CGI. It's not as bad as Black Widow though. Nothing is as bad as Black Widow CGI. Cassie's power ends up being that she can see things in the future before they happen. So she has her first flash forward moment after Ben like saves her from the water and he's taking her vitals. She like basically already knows what they're gonna be. She like relives the vital moment twice. And so she just gets like kind of mad at Ben being like, I'm, I'm fine, you know, it's okay. I just wanna go home and watch Idol. Which truly that line, like no notes, like no notes. That was, I just need to go home and watch Idol. <laughs> Another cut. Now we're at the opera. This movie has no natural transitions. We're at the opera with the man from the Amazon. Let's just like <laughs> figure out where we are, okay? So Cassie is like at like the least her mid 20s, okay? So there's been at least like 25 years, I'd say, since we saw the man in the Amazon. Tell me why this man looks like five years older maximum. I'm gonna speed run some information. The guy from the Amazon brings a girl back to his crib after the opera. We see the spider living in a tank. They get jiggy with it, him and the woman, not him and the spider. And then he falls asleep. While he's sleeping, he starts tweaking and having painful looking flash forwards where three superhero girls conk him. Now, I thought this was giving away a lot for the rest of the movie. His dream is like 90% of the trailers we saw for Madam Web. And like the Madam Web advertisement, like I guess I'm just maybe the demographic, but like the Madam Web advertisement was really shoved down my throat. And I saw some people talking about how Madam Web didn't advertise enough. I think we just must not be on the same corners of the internet because I saw Sydney Sweeney upside down more than you have heard the Willem scream. In saying that, how many more times do you think we see the three girls in their superhero costumes in the rest of the movie? Lock your answers in now. 
Okay. <laughs> so the guy from the Amazon wakes up and he like turns to the girl and he's like, I have this nightmare every night. And you can just immediately tell the woman is there just as a plot device. So he has somebody to like tell this information to. He just like has, I'm so sorry. I don't want to be like roasting this man, but he just has like a really interesting inflection. I have no idea what those girls are called. Speed round of more info. The woman tries to like kill him, I guess, but she moves very slowly. And I have to tell you this because it reveals he also has the power to paralyze people by like pressure pointing their wrists. It's like, okay, anyways. <laughs> The woman gives him a code to something. She works for the government in some capacity or like for like a secret agency. So she gives up the code and like she does this because she thinks he'll like stop the paralysis and he doesn't obviously, he just kills her. And he says, believe me, it was a good thing you didn't know today. It was a day you were going to die. And like the most straight faced tone has like no empathy, no emotions at all for the matter. Cuts to Cassie at a barbecue, a baby shower barbecue. This seems very American. There is a Pepsi can spotting. Not much happens when she first gets there, but there is a part where an extra like tips a beer bottle at her and Dakota Johnson just like pretends she doesn't see it and just like walks past him. That part was really, was really funny to me. Emma Roberts pulls up and apparently it's Emma Roberts's baby shower. She's the one who's pregnant. She is Ben's sister. So Cassie's EMT partner's sister. But for some reason, I actively could not remember if Emma Roberts and Ben were siblings or dating or like siblings are married in this movie. I could just like, for some reason was like always forgetting. Um, so yeah, I was constantly playing that game, you know, siblings are dating. Turns out siblings. They make Cassie play baby shower games, which is my personal hell. I took a break, I ate a banana. And why did I take a break? Say it with me, because my battery died, okay. As I was saying, she gets another like deja vu vision moment while they're trying to guess the baby's name, but Ben walks in and is like, hey, there is a fire, we gotta go. So Cassie dips. At the fire, Cassie has visions of things like going wrong and people dying. In this part, I actually thought was, sorry, this is a horrible, joke but I actually thought it was fire. This is like the first time she actually does something about her visions and as one of the like EMTs goes off to an ambulance to drive it she stops him because she has visions of him dying. She asks him if she can drive instead but he blows her off because she just had that accident where you know she was in the car and she fell in the river so he's like no chill you're fine I'm gonna do it. So she lets him when he gets in the ambulance he starts driving off and he immediately gets t-boned by a semi. The acting <laughs> okay the acting in this part's also a little rough but let's not dwell, let's let's keep moving. It cuts to the evil Spider-Man, which is how I will be referring to him, talking with a woman, a woman who's like helping him now. I recognize this actress. Something about like her is very pleasing to me. Like, I think it's like her inflection. I was like literally nowhere close to figuring that out. But I like recognize this actress. I'm like, I know I've seen her in something and it killed me the whole movie, like trying to remember what I knew her from. I looked it up and she's in The Flight Attendant. That's what I've watched her in, which is an HBO show starring Kaylee Kuoko. And guess fucking what? Kaylee Cuoco's character's name in The Flight Attendant, I dare you to guess what it is. It's Cassie, bitch. It's Cassie. Anyways, the point of this girl's character basically is she's just like a computer whiz, a computer nerd who has the ability to like track people anywhere. So basically what her device is in this movie is that she's trying to help the evil Spider-Man track down the three girls that he sees in his dream in present time so that he can kill them now so that in the future they can't kill him. It's very like Greek mythology vibes. Okay, now we cut to Cassie getting on a train in Grand Central. She's kind of tweaking because of the fire, you know, like the person dying. So she is like not, <laughs> she's not doing well, I guess you could say. We find out that on the train Cassie gets on, the three girls are also on the same train. When Cassie gets on the train, she chooses the seat next to the end like aisle seat, which is just really bad like public transportation etiquette, but go off. The hacker girl is able to locate all of the girls on the train and sick the evil Spider-Man on them. And she's doing this by using like, you know, the super high tech security cameras we all knew and loved from the 90s that were, you know, shooting in 1080p. Cassie gets a vision of the evil Spider-Man killing the girls. So her plan is to just abduct them just girly things. The girls are like <laughs> unsure about Cassie, but they do choose to believe her once they see the evil Spider-Man crawling on the ceiling of the subway station. I didn't mention, but Cassie had seen the man like walking towards the girls on the train, which is why she like 
decides to like grab them and get them off the train so when she saw him on the train he was wearing like a very john wick suit walking towards them and then he's all of a sudden 30 seconds later in his little latex suit climbing on the ceiling so either this man is completely oiled up or this could not happen. Okay, it was at this point that I, you know, I really started seeing the genius of this film. They're really exploring the question in the theory of time travel, are our futures fixed or do we have the ability to change them if per se we were able to see the future or travel to the future? Okay, so there some really philosophical thinking going on in Madame Web, but she didn't know that. Anyways, then Cassie steals a cab. The cops think she stole a girl, so basically the cops are on the hunt for Cassie, which brings up Sydney Sweeney's filmography. It's interesting that she has just played two minors, you know, two girls in high school, albeit very different versions of high school, very different high school universes, while simultaneously, just a few months ago, her R-rated rom-com just came out. Now, I think this says more about like the expectations of women versus like anything to do with Sydney Sweeney's like roles particularly, but I do think it's very interesting that she's simultaneously playing a minor and someone in an R-rated rom-com. Okay, so since they're on the run, Cassie drives them to the woods, drops them off, says, peace, I'll be back, I got shit to do. Sydney Sweeney's character, who, by the way, her name is Julia, I had genuinely the hardest time tracking names while watching this movie. While I wrote the script for this, I barely knew Sydney Sweeney's character's name was Julia. I did not know what the other two girls' names were, or I don't, I still at this moment do not know the evil Spider-Man's character's name. Names aren't said that often, and also the two other girls are given such like little to do that it doesn't like really matter. Like you can survive and be fine without knowing that much about them. Anyways, Julia goes, Cassie, Cassie, can we trust you? And and Cassie's like, mm, yeah, you can, yeah. And Julia's like, oh, okay. <laughs> so Cassie leaves them to go back to her apartment and she pulls a trunk out from under her bed and she looks at her mom's journal. It's kind of funny because when she's like scrolling through the journal, scrolling, wow, am I on the internet too much? She starts like flipping through her mom's journal. Cassie finds a picture of her mom with evil Spider-Man. So she surmises like kind of who evil Spider-Man was. We cut back to the girls in the woods and they're like not doing much. Basically, Julia is getting hazed by one of the other girls, but they all realize they all have shared trauma. Aww, so they trauma bond. The girls decide to leave instead of wait for Cassie. And so they pick up shop and they walk to a diner. How they knew the diner was there beats fucking me. When they start walking like to the diner versus when they arrive at the diner, there's a lighting change and it's implied that like it took them a while to get there, to walk through the woods. The girls are eating at the diner and this like Republican looking fellow is like spying on them. I think it's supposed to be like implied that he's snitching on the girls to the computer whiz. I think this part might've just went over my head. I don't really know what was going on because like, are they trying to say that the evil Spider-Man has like people like watching for him? And like, what are the odds that this man is at like a diner in the woods, like a la Riverdale? Like this man is just hanging out in Riverdale, like waiting for something to happen. I don't know. I was very confused by it, but I do think that's what they were saying. So <laughs> the reason I think this is that they show the computer girl again. And like, imagine having all of your scenes in a movie in front of a gamer setup. A lot of the camera angles, to me, feel like they're supposed to be like from the perspective of a spider. Like, I think that was the cinematography like idea is that we're constantly like viewing things from a spider. But that does mean that we're just like constantly seeing the back of the gamer setup. Cassie finally returns to the woods. Um, the girls are gone, a la Rosamund Pike and Ben Affleck. Cassie pulls up to the diner then in like mere seconds, like it takes her no time to get there, which is just so funny because it showed the girls walking for like what seemed like hours, like there was a lighting change. So we cut back to the diner and Toxic by Britney Spears is playing, which like I personally have no qualms with, but the girls are dancing on a diner table and that is like horrific. <laughs> that's like not, ooh, that's not a gig. But okay, Toxic by Britney Spears came out in 2003, which totally destroys my idea of when this movie is supposed to be set. So now at this point, I'm thinking that this movie is supposed to be early 2000s. However, this is confusing because they do make it a point to show that like nobody has cell phones and like people had cell phones in the early 2000s. Like I got my first phone when I was five. So that would be around like 2005. And the only reason I had a phone, it was literally a track phone, 
I've mentioned that on this channel before, but it was only because I like was going to ballet, like taking the bus to ballet. So it was just in case I needed to like contact my parents. But that's just to say that like I was five and had a cell phone, like cell phones existed around that time period. So like things are just not tracking. Evil Spider-Man pulls up at the diner. He starts murking literally anyone in sight. Even like innocent bystanders who are not even moving, it's vile. Like someone is minding their business and he just takes them out. It's okay though, because it was all a vision. Surprise. Cassie is still in the woods where the girls are no longer there. It's her like standing in front of her stolen cab and Toxic by Britney Spears is like playing out of the cab speakers, which honestly, I was, this transition was pretty slick. I, I like this moment. I was like, yeah. Madam Web is that bitch in this moment. They give us like more like details on how the girls started dancing on the tables, but I will not be indulging this information due to secondhand embarrassment. I also know no diner staff would allow that. The only like rules and laws that apply in a diner are those like set and enforced by the diner staff. Like diners are their own sovereign nation. And I know it would be on site if someone started dancing on the tables in a diner. The girls dancing on the table for like a group of boys too is very like, it's kind of an accurate metaphor for this movie, but we will discuss that briefly later. We cut to Cassie cosplaying driving from McLaren. Okay, she is like cutting in front of a semi in the DS zone. She is going crazy. And you think this is mad. You think this is insane until Cassie literally drives into the diner. Like, I think I gasped while watching the movie. Like, I could not believe I, I did not see it coming. So the reason Cassie does this is to hit evil Spider-Man. And somehow she does this very miraculously. The evil Spider-Man tries to like uh, do like his paralysis trick that he did on the woman he slept with to Cassie. And Cassie's just kind of like, okay, like weirdo, get off me. Cassie brings them to a motel after they escape the diner. And she tells them that she's like had enough. She's gonna dump the girls on their parents. But all the girls, you know, they trauma dump so that Cassie feels bad and that they can all stay together. That's supposed to, supposed to be a heart. Also, why would she bring them to a motel if she was just going to abandon them? But whatever, okay. The girls go to bed and Cassie's like staring out the motel window. And for some reason, when I saw this, I could like, my eyes could not figure out what I was looking at. And for some reason, I really thought Cassie was like a white parrot. I do feel crazy for admitting this, but I was really confused on what I was looking at. Cassie walks out of the motel and she drives her stolen cab to the scene of the crime, which is just crazy behavior. She has this like weird glitchy, like vision conversation with the evil Spider-Man using their shared like magic vision where he like basically tells Cassie why he's doing what he's doing, why he's trying to kill the girls, which we had already like known from the beginning of the movie, but this is Cassie's like first time finding out. Then surprise, gotcha again, Cassie never actually left the motel. This was all like, she was having this like vision within her like hotel bed, which was very like Inception vibes. In the morning when the girls wake up, I could not even believe this. When the girls wake up, Cassie goes, guys, I'm going to Peru. It's just so wild. So basically she's leaving the girls with her EMT partner, Ben, while she goes to Peru to go to the Amazon to try to, you know, like figure out some stuff about what happened to her mom and why her mom did what she did, which is just so fucking insane, bro. You really think you're gonna pull up at the Amazon in a week and like all your answers are gonna be like revealed. Like that is just some eat, pray, love type of bullshit that I can't get behind <laughs> in this moment. Like I just don't know what she was planning on figuring out. So Cassie pulls up to the Amazon. She is in, she's in the Amazon, basically in my backyard in Wisconsin, as I said, and she is wearing a red flannel tied over some jeans, which is so 2000s coded. Like that was my ideal outfit growing up. So I I have to support, I, I she served, unfortunately. Also, like, are you allowed to just walk into the Amazon? For some reason, I feel like you need, like, to be allowed or, like, permitted. Maybe this isn't true. I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm talking about, but it just feels weird to know that you can just, like, enter the Amazon. The Spider-Man, not to be confused with the evil Spider-Man, but the Spider-Man who saved Cassie's mom, or I guess she didn't, she died. So the one who, like, saved Cassie, I guess, shows up in the woods and he's wearing, like, normal clothes instead of, like, his spider, like, tribal outfit. And he's basically just like, hey, girl, hey, we've been waiting. Where you been, loca? <laughs> also, I probably missed this. This is probably on me. But do we know what happened to Cassie's dad? Like, was that, was that ever mentioned? The Spider-Man tells us that the evil Spider-Man is cursed because he stole the spider. We also find out 
Oh, that was very Canadian. We also find out that Cassie's mom was in the Amazon because she was trying to research, this is so wild, she was trying to research the spiders because the spiders had a venom that had like, I don't know, some specific like single nucleotide that was known to help with neuromuscular disease, which I guess Cassie was going to be born with neuromuscular disease. But because the spider bit her mom, that like cured like Cassie's neuromuscular disease. But I don't have a neuromuscular disorder. But I don't have a neuromuscular disorder. So basically he's saying Cassie shouldn't resent her mother because she was severely pregnant in the Amazon for her. It was all for her, baby. We go back to the girls like chilling in Ben's house and it's actually like pretty cute. It's like very fun vibes. And then all of a sudden like blam, Emma Roberts walks in and her water breaks. And I had genuinely forgot Emma Roberts was in this movie. Emma Roberts is basically like, uh, I'm four weeks early, but uh, conducimos el coche al hospital. We need to get to the hospital. The girls like pop the front seat of the car forward and like like lower Emma into the back seat of the car, which to me just feels like more maneuvering than is necessary. Like why they didn't just put her in the passenger seat, I don't know. But anyways, that's what they decided to do. The girls' cover automatically gets blown because the computer whiz is able to pick up their faces on again, I guess the high tech technology of the 2000s. And she sicks the evil Spider-Man on them once again. Now you may be asking yourself, why didn't the security cameras pick them up when they were first dropping them off at Ben's house? To which I say, I wanna know that too. So we find out Cassie is back stateside. Welcome home. America, America. She gets a vision that the evil Spider-Man is attacking the girls and Ben and Emma in the streets, basically. So she gets like a future vision being like, oh, rut row, this is about to happen to them. So Cassie does the only logical thing and steals an ambulance that is actively saving someone or like helping someone. <laughs> Very girl boss. From like a story perspective, I feel like it would have been better if they would have had like an ambulance parked in Ben's like driveway. Like I understand that's not where they would actually store an ambulance when it isn't being used. But I feel like people wouldn't think about it too hard. Maybe like it kind of makes sense. Like Ben's an EMT. Maybe there could have been an ambulance parked at his house. Like the one that he drives. I know. I know it doesn't make sense. Okay, but work with me. And I think it would be like better for Cassie to just take an ambulance that's not being used versus like stealing one that's actively trying to save someone. Now, you may be wondering, why did Cassie need an ambulance versus like just taking a car on the street? Like maybe Ben had a second car or, you know, maybe she could use her stolen cab. Do you think it was A, so Cassie could use the lights and speed through traffic to catch up? Do you think it was B, so she could use the radio to like call for backup? Or do you think it is C, so that Cassie can drive through a Calvin Klein ad and hit the evil Spider-Man? I'll wait. I know this is a tough one, but if you guess C, you're correct. We're almost there, guys. Trust me, we're almost there. So Cassie, as I said, hits the evil Spider-Man. She grabs the girls and they escape by driving the ambulance away and pulling up at a building. So they escape by climbing to the top of the building. And at the top of the building is the largest like neon Pepsi Cola sign, like the most intense product placement you've ever seen in your life. So they're up there, they're tussling, they're fighting with the evil Spider-Man and Cassie is able to activate some more of her power. So when all three girls are in danger, she is able to, you know, kind of transform a la the souls in Scooby-Doo Spooky Island through the demon Ritus. And she's able to go to three places at once and save all the girls at one time. There's a lot of like fire and destruction. This part is shot exactly like Succession. There's a lot of like, it's like shot on like a handheld and there's like a lot of like zooming going on. But like Succession, if Succession had bad green screen, the pee in Pepsi Cola actually crushes the evil Spider-Man. That's kind of how he, you know, hits his demise. I, so I watched this movie, like I said, obviously. I forgot how he died because it was so like, eh? that I didn't remember how he died until I like read my notes from watching the movie. And I was like, oh yeah, okay, so that's how it happened. It was just like a little like inconsequential, dare I say. Cassie falls off the building in the midst of the fight and she like falls into the water. Cassie and drowning man, this. And like the S from the Pepsi Cola falls into and something like, like burning, like goes right by Cassie. And she's like falling into the abyss. Like she's like <laughs> not coming back until Julia dives in and pulls Cassie out, okay? And she does CPR on her and she saves her, but Cassie's eyes are like, it's kind of giving glaucoma. Sorry, I'm not trying to be mean, but like her eyes are like very like um, white. It cuts to Emma 
Roberts giving birth and we find out that Emma Roberts is actually Mary Parker. Okay, so who she just gave birth to is Peter Parker. This is what I was talking about when they gave them like a crumb of the Marvel Universe, but actually Spider-Man is like also owned by Sony. So it's like kind of like Marvel <laughs> Universe, but it's still like the Sony aspect of it. But that is like the little bit of tie-in they get to the Marvel Universe. So Peter Parker is born, which also kind of confirms that this is early 2000s. From my understanding, like Tom Holland's Peter Parker is like a little bit younger than me. Yikes, I hate when people are younger than me, but I do think he's a little bit younger than me. So it would track that he was born in the early 2000s. When it cuts to Cassie also at the hospital, she's laying in bed and she has like bandages over her eyes. It's kind of giving Medusa. Anyways, we finally finish with the three girls living with Cassie, or I, th I think that's what's going on. They're all like hanging out in the kitchen. Cassie is still wearing like her eye covers. She has like a vision at the end. We learn that like Cassie's like permanently wearing like glasses from now on. From my understanding, this is like an accurate portrayal of Madame Web from the comics. They do have Pepsi bottles with their dinner. I just also wonder if like they were planning on doing sequels to Madame Web because I can't imagine like Dakota Johnson agreeing to doing movies in the future where like she's wearing sunglasses the whole time like you never see her eyes it just feels like a big ask but i don't know i don't know speaking of sequels do you guys remember my question from earlier about how many more times we see the girls in superhero costumes after like the evil spider-man's like initial dream of them did you guys guess one more time if i do remember correctly we only ever see the girls in their superhero costumes again at the end of the movie when Cassie is having her vision of like what the future looks like for them and all the girls are wearing their superhero costumes there too. But we never actually see the girls like being superheroes in the current time that the movie is set. It's only ever in visions, which to me is like so misleading. We barely see them in them. And I just think that's like setting up viewers for disappointment because like you're expecting to see them like fighting crime all the time, but they're not. So I watched Sydney Sweeney's Hot Ones that came out pretty recently. And one of the questions that is asked is like, oh, like how did you feel when you got to put on the costume for the first time? And Sydney Sweeney talks about like the pretty extensive like process of getting like the suit to like fit her correctly. And like, I just cannot even believe like how much time that probably took for her to get genuinely less than a minute of screen time in the suit. And that brings me to my second point, the way the two other girls did nothing like, they gave them nothing to do in this movie. Like, I could not remember them because they are so rarely used. Like, their names are so rarely used in the movie. So, like I said, one of them, it's it's Julia, Anya, and the other girl, the black girl's name is Maddie. Genuinely, I think Maddie's only purpose in this movie is to be a foil to Julia, so Sydney Sweeney's character. She basically just antagonizes Julia the whole movie, whereas Julia is seen as kind of like this weak, really like soft, like people pleaser. For main characters, I've never seen them do less. The last thing I want to talk about really quickly is the discourse around why this movie was made. People have been pointing out that this movie kind of has the vibe of like studio executives saying like, oh look we made the movie with the girls we made the movie with the girl superheroes and nobody liked it okay so now you can stop telling us to make girl movies personally i don't feel like this opinion is wrong i personally did not really like black widow or madam webb very much mostly just because they were pretty boring and they both had like very like weak cgi which is you know obviously like a huge part of superhero movies madam webb's budget was 80 million in comparison ant-man and the wasp quantumania the movie that came out in 2023 its budget was 275 million and that one didn't go over very well either there's also clearly superhero movie fatigue like we're just constantly being shown superhero movies at a point where i think people are kind of getting like tired of it of there being so many but that being said guardians of the galaxy volume 3 came out really recently and that movie was phenomenal it was really really good so it's clear that good superhero movies can still exist right now and guardians of the galaxy's budget for reference was 250 million dollars so madam webb it just kind of leaves you feeling like disappointed and it's just like a little like just like sad not to say that like i think it deserves all of the hate like people are acting like it's like this travesty <laughs> like it's this horrible thing and i don't really think it's that bad to me like its biggest crime is being boring anyways that's really all i gotta say today i'm planning on sticking my arm in a corner and seeing if a spider will bite me because apparently history shows that's all it takes to become a superhero so i will be working on that new video showing my powers. I hope you enjoyed this video. Movies are my passion for fashion, so I hope you enjoyed because I love never shutting up. It's my favorite hobby. As always, 
my other social media will be in the description. My Instagram, my Goodreads, my Letterbox, my... I don't actually know what else, um, but that'll be in the description box. If you liked this video, you want to see more content from me, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next one. Peace, love, and happiness. Mwah, 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 mwah. Bye.